That is so true. Uh, for God's grace, we always praise God for his mercy and his grace. And it's good to join uh, Pastor Achilles and family and all the church members through the Zoom platform. Um, I'm very honored to be called or invited to preach in this meeting. Um, as I said before, can you all hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, as I said before, um, sorry, I was, we, we had to uh, go visit a family uh, this evening. That's why we were running late. We were planning to be here before 7.45 or so uh, to join for this meeting. Um, so today, um, um, as uh, Pastor Akila said, my name is Pastor Baiju and my wife Gita, she is very close by sitting and listening to us. Um, I'm from Kerala, Adur, uh, and studied with uh, Pastor Akilas um, in seminary in Daradun. Um, after that, in 2004, we got married in Bombay, and uh, my wife is from a Hindu background, and uh, we moved over to um, uh, USA 2004. Uh, I came from a Jacobite uh, background um, in 1996, uh, some, uh, somewhere in, in Adur, uh, somebody shared gospel with us. And uh, um, that is how we came to know the Lord. Um, we were worshiping in traditional way uh, in a Jacobite church. Uh, and when we heard the gospel, um, that completely changed. My father was an alcoholic addict uh, more than we can believe or we can truly understand. Uh, instead of drinking uh, morning coffee, he might be drinking whiskey or brandy. That addicted he was. Um, one after another, we had a lot of uh, issues and problems, but in God's grace, he healed us from all that. And uh, uh, he called me first for the ministry in 1997, uh, and I left uh, Kerala in 1999 um, to Madhya Pradesh uh, in Itarsi. I studied there a little bit, then joined Daradun for the higher studies. And uh, right now we serve a church in Sugarland here in Houston. Uh, that is where Abraham and our Binoy, we call him Binoy brother. Binoy brother and family is uh, worshiping the Lord. I haven't used the um, uh, Zoom for a little while because we now use, um, we are in place. So uh, definitely as Akilas was saying, um, joining through Zoom, it is difficult and uh, though we see each other on a screen, it is not uh, the fellowship we don't get uh, over this platform, right? So, but still, children of God make use of all the facilities and media, whatever technology we have available, we make use of them to glorify God. And this, this is one of the platforms. So today as uh, you're fasting and praying, I want to share my screen. Um, if uh, the, uh, who is controlling the Zoom, can you uh, let me share my screen, screen please? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to preach to you this evening <clears throat> about a new experience. Um, life is full of different experience for sure. And uh, as a children, as a child of God, um, we have, we need new experience from the Lord um, every day. And without him uh, giving us the new experiences, we are dull, we will be old, we won't be able to do what we are called to do. So as uh, I, I was pondering on this. I was actually going through the slides uh, this morning as I was sitting in my living room, thinking what to preach uh, to all of you. And this is what came to my mind. Christian life, I know the time is very limited for tonight. I will leave you all in time. Uh, Christian life is a spirit-filled life. And the spirit we received or we have received or we received daily from the Lord is not a spirit of timidity, right? Malayalatil Paranyal, Birutatini Atmavanella, Nam Prabhichurikana. We haven't received the spirit of timidity. Rather, it is written in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, uh, rather of power, love, and self discipline. The spirit God is power upon us. You remember how Peter was? Peter was 
a man who jump into conclusions, jump into issues, a man who even uh, denied Jesus Christ more than three times, around three times. And he, when he was filled in the Holy Spirit, that new experience completely changed his life. That's why Peter writes in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, we have received the spirit of power and spirit of self-discipline. So to have a new experience from the Lord, we need the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit will remind you of everything I told you, as Jesus says, to, to keep our experience new. Um, we are human beings. We are full of emotions. You know, we all have emotions. And when we have a new thing in our life, for example, you buy a new house. I'm just trying to relate to you uh, materially, right? You buy a new car. You buy anything new for a little while, for a week, maybe two weeks or a month or two months. That new experience keep you vibe. You know, your vibe is different there because you got something new. The same way, a little more higher level, when we think about spiritual life, we have to experience from the Lord new experiences every day to stay new and crushed in God's presence. That's why God gave us the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we won't be able to you know, reach that level of newness in our life. We will be monotonous. You have spoken with people. You have talked to people. When you talk to them, they, you know, even because of the COVID right now, people even say, I don't want to go to church anymore. You know, this is enough. We are content. We are completely satisfied what we have. There is the new level or new stepping up is not seen in much places. That is because uh, we don't have the newness of the spirit. In Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 to 8, you know, Peter, John, and James, Jesus chose those three people as leaders, you know, uh, to lead the disciples. And he, there in chapter 17, we see some experience they go through. The incident is one of we can call out of the world experience, you know, you know, something extraordinary, something extravagant. You know, you feel like Jesus is taking these three people and he is taking them to a different level of experience. There are too many opinions uh, from witnessing you know, there are too many opinions from witnessing is not needed, but full hearted acceptance, you know, Opinions are not going to change your life. You can have a lot of experience from different places. And, but where here, the opinion is not that matters. Your full hearted acceptance of the truth. God chosen prophet coming to meet their master. These people were in a mountain with Jesus Christ and God's chosen prophets coming down to meet their own creator, Jesus Christ. It was like a movie trailer for these three disciples. It is, they were amazed to see how things are happening. In verse 1, Jesus was walking with disciples. And verse 2, he transfigured suddenly. They did not expect that to happen. In verse 2, it says, his face changed. It started shining like, like the sun. And they were not expecting this kind of uh, experience in that mountain. And as soon as Jesus walked into the mountain, he transfigured in verse 2. His face changed. He started shining like the sun. The one who created sun, moon, and stars, he transfigured before their eyes. In verse 2, the B part says, his garments became as white as light. Who is he? Who is this person? The one who slept with them, who fed them, walked with them, who even defended when they were in the lowest level. A person who people for Ordinary people, Jesus Christ is just mere man. He's a son of a carpenter. You know, he now has company of a handful of 
fisherman. He always go to the marketplace. He always have companies of sinful people. People who follow Jesus Christ are blind people, people who have leprosy, who people, the majority of the society not accepting. Those kind of people follow Christ. Now, this idea need to be purged out of the mind of the disciples. Now, they are looking at a different person. They are looking at the creator. Though they've been walking with Jesus Christ, they have never seen the face of Jesus Christ in this way. And here Jesus, even garments became <clears throat> as white as light. Who is he? He is the one who met Moses in Horeb and said, I am that I am. You remember when Moses was so timid? We know the story. I don't have to elaborate on it. Moses did not want to go back to the place where he was a murderer. And he did not want to return to that place. He ran away from Egypt, fearing his life. We know the story. And to take this person or Moses back to Egypt, Moses need to meet God in the wilderness. And when he approached this bush, the sound he heard, I am that I am, changed him completely. Though we know the story, you know, he argued with God and all that thing. But meeting God in the burning bush, a new experience gave him a new perspective of life, new perspective of leadership, new perspective of ministry, new perspective of looking at the people who are in slavery. And God says to Moses, Moses, their cry has reached me. Their problem I have seen, their cry I have seen. Now I am going to appoint you, dear child of God, you and I are appointed as Moses. Unless and until you meet God in personal level, you cannot be Moses. Until, until and unless you meet God in personal level, you cannot be Peter. You cannot be John. You cannot be James. You, If you want to be James, if you want to be Peter, you have to have that personal encounter. That you won't get it in the church. I'm not telling you, you know, church, church is meant for fellowship and all this gathering, but in personal level, you have to connect with God. And when we get together, it kindles for sure. But more than that, in personal level, we have to meet God. Who is this guy? He is uh, he's the one who said to Moses, I am that I am. Praise God. He transfigured before the eyes of the disciples. Until then, Jesus was walking as a regular simple man, as I said before. Do not take his simplicity granted. He became the ordinary for you. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8 says, Being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even the death on the cross. He is simplicity. Why did Jesus become simple? Praise God. He became symbol for you. He became symbol for me. He, even in his silence, there is power. You remember the day when that lady who was caught in an illegal act was brought to Jesus Christ? When everybody was arguing, you know, there was a huge noise going around Jesus. Jesus kept silent. And he scooped down and he started writing on the ground. You know the story. You know, people did not understand why Jesus is not arguing with the people who came to kill this person or stone this lady. Even in his silence, there was power. So in your problem, when Christ keep, you feel like he is keeping silent, even in that silence, there is power. And sometimes we pray for different things. It's not answered. It's not answered the way you want. Since my knowledge is limited, 
and God's knowledge is unlimited. I have to trust in his knowledge and his purpose. And when he is keeping it silent, he is still working for you. Yeshu minda adirikim boyum. അവൻ നമുക്ക് വേണ്ടി പ്രവർത്തിച്ചു കൊണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് അതിൽ നാം ദൈവത്തിന് സ്ത്രോത്രം കരയക്ഷണം ദൈവത്തിന് സ്ത്രോത്രം ഹിയർ ഹി ബിക്കെയിം സിമ്പിൾ അവൻ ദൈവ രൂപത്തിൽ ഇരിക്കെ ദൈവത്തോടുള്ള സമത്വം മുറുകെ പിടിച്ചു കൊള്ളണം എന്ന് വിചാരിക്കാതെ ദാസ രൂപം എടുത്ത് മനുഷ്യ സാദൃശ്യത്തിൽ ആയി തനതാൻ താഴ്ത്തി യേശു മരണത്തോളം ക്രൂശിലെ മരണത്തോളം തന്നെ അവൻ താഴ്ത്തി കൊടുത്തു ദൈവത്തിന് സ്ത്രോത്രം ഹലലൂയ his simplicity is for us or god became an ordinary man for us to have this experience in our life the life full of i mean god's experiences hallelujah he became what he became because of you and tonight more than i preach to you i'm preaching to myself he became what he became just for me because of my sin because of my problem because he wants me to be in heaven with him he became what he became god who left all glory above came down to this lowest stage this earth and he became one among us hallelujah he got humiliated for you some of us some of you you know my brother recently was in jail and they were in jail for a month and a day 32 days in jail my i might think that is so humiliating they might think that's humiliating but how much humiliation christ carried himself for us yesu etrathalam ninna namakku vendi sahichu ennu orkumbol nammale snehippan nam endu mathram undu aro paattukaran paadiyadile endu kandu ithra snehippa ഇത്ര മാനിപ്പാൻ യേശുവെ യോഗ്യനല്ല ഇതു പ്രാപിപ്പാൻ ഇതു കൃപയാദ യേശുവെ വാട്ട് ഡിഡ് ജീസസ് റിയലി ഡു ടു ഹിം ടു സഫർ ഓൾ ദിസ് ഹി സഫർ ഹങ്കർ ഫോർ യു ഹങ്കർ ഫോർ മീ ഹി സഫർ തേഴ്സ് for you and me so that we will have this experience in our life our death on the cross was considered as a curse we know it he became a curse for you so that you don't have to live under the curse so all those who have accepted jesus christ and live under the grace of god through the instruction of the holy spirit are no longer in curse if anyone preach against it they are a curse even now in our christian realm we see pentecostal pastors and ministers trying to you know shabha marikal you know they are going to untie the curse on believers if you are a true believer you are no more a curse you don't have curse because christ became your he took the curse if anybody approached you in that manner you need to rebuke that person you are not a curse namalakka yakobile karnu paadunu paadu undarunnallo ningale njangal arichadoli chinnaruvan vannarichal vanavanengil maadudan taan elkum sabayin chaavam palavada mudeshangala go paaril mulachu parakunu devathinu mudeshangam thotta avasanippon dhanyan nyangu paadi povam devathinu stotram you are not a curse why are you not under curse because christ became a curse for you Christ became a curse in the Rathriel. I am a man who is 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 a man. He became a symbol for me because he loved you and me. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. He was a man who is a man who is a man who is a man who is a man. Paul, you are purchased from curse. not only from sin your curse is removed this is your new experience praise the lord no more curse no more bondage for those who are in christ romans chapter 8 verse 1 says therefore there is no now no condemnation for those who are in jesus christ 
So as a believer, as a pastor, as a minister, as a believer, what we need to check every day, am I in Christ? Do I live in, in this new experience daily? You can be a rotten believer if you want to, but Christ does not want you to be a rotten believer. He wants you to have the new experience every day. Romans chapter eight, verse one, I just want to read one more time. Therefore, there is no now condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Adu one day, Paul Christu Eshuil, Ullavarka Oru Sikshavidiyum, Illa Devatana Stotram. In Christ, our experience, it is a life-changing experience. In Christ's experience, it is a life-changing experience. Hallelujah. And therefore, we need to trust in God for our new life and to, to walk in the new newness of life. Disciples saw the prophets whom they have only heard of. With Christ, it is not just hearing, but it is experiencing. With Christ, it is not just he merely hearing things. Namal Vishwasatal Prabhupada Here they are experiencing that. How can you just imagine these disciples were able to see the prophets of God? Not only the prophet of God, prophets of God, they were able to see God Himself. Standing in that mountain. This is Christian life. Dear child of God, you don't just follow some traditions. You don't follow any pastor. You don't follow a church. You don't follow any man-made stories. You don't follow any of this. In case if you are going to church for any of that, you are mistaken. You are mistaken. You are following something wrong. You as a child of God, truly speaking, you are following Christ who became a man for us with Christ. Is more than hearing. Moses, a man who was used by God powerfully, miracles that he performed are hard to believe. Disciples are seeing that man of God right in front of their eyes. Can you believe what? Okay, that is another topic to preach. The miracles uh, Moses performed, it is hard to believe it. Those are the miracles he performed. By God's grace, they are seeing that person, that prophet in front of their eyes. Elijah, a prophet who raised voice against kings. He was a man without any fear, truly speaking. Yes, there was, there was a time he was timid and fearful. All that I understand. But look how he ministered for the kingdom of God. He was able to stand before the presence of kings and challenge them. He said, dude, get out, run for your life. The rain is coming. That is my translation. And I am going back to pray. He, I have, Ahab has to rush home because there was a great rain was coming. This is God's experience. That man, man is standing there. What God, you know, Elijah did whatever God asked him to do. I'm going to conclude here soon. Disciples, to, disciples got to see these men of God in real life. Very, very close. What do you want? Do you want to be a come sit stand and go Christian? Or do you want a close experience with Christ? I want to repeat. Do you and do I? want to be a Christian, come, stand, sit, get up, and go. If that kind of Christian is what we are expecting to become, that is not what Christ vision for you. You know, each one of us, for each one of us, God, Jesus has a vision. That vision is, my child should live in the new experience daily. A man or a woman who walk with Christ will enjoy spiritual life. There is an outstanding or there is an outside experience and inside experience. For an outside Christian, it is all just religious noises. But for a born again Christian, it is life changing experience. For a person who is standing outside the church, for them it is all, all noise. But the person who is inside, he, that person truly 
understand the life changing experience they are experiencing in their life they every day they need it we need that mountain top experience to become strong christians we need that kind of experiences in these days for that we need to stay with christ stay connected with christ romans 12 chapter 2 and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the rede- renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of god that which is good and acceptable and perfect ee logathin anubragaade nanmayum prasadavum poornadayum ulla devagidam inna ennu thirichariyandathine manasu pudukki nam roopaandra padanam ennu devathinte aathmaavu njan adu orpikkiyan devathinu stotram transform christians are christians that are not transformed there are two kind of christians there are transformed christians and christians that are not transformed roopaandra padana christiani roopaandra padatha christiani oru pudhiya anubhavathinu vendi nam roopaandra mullavarai thiruvan they will agree kya na petta nirtham joel chapter 2 verse 13 rent your heart and not your garments return to the lord your god for he is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and abounding in love and he will relent from sending calamities devam namme kurich aagrahikkunna idana god design desire for the children of god to come back vastrangale alla hridayangale thanne keeri ningalde devumaye yehovade adukkilekku thiruvin avan krubayum karunayum dheergashamayum mahadeyum ullavanallo avan anarthathe kurichu anidabikkum devathinu stotram when the child of god wants to come back to god we have to break our heart inside to have a newness experience that's why joel has to say not your garments please stop it you have to be inside the brokenness needs to be inside and that brokenness will bring revival in my family in your family that brokenness inside will bring revival in the church revival wherever you go when you are revived inside with the new experience the mountain top experience definitely god will use you to bring that revival to wherever you travel that is god's promise they with the stotram a mountain top experience is where you hear heavenly voice i'm going to stop here matthew chapter 7 in verse 5 while he was still speaking a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud said this is my beloved son with whom i well pleased listen to him you want to hear god he doesn't talk in the valley you want to hear god climb up the mountain when you climb up the mountain there you will listen you will hear him elijah stood up stood, stood against the prophets of baal and asera on the mountain top your battle yes is on the mountain top as well as where god will talk to you is also on the mountain top and christ really wanted to talk to you and he wanted to talk to me too and for that when he leads you to the mountain top make sure you obey make sure i obey avan parayumbol thanne prakashamulla oru megam avare mel nerilittu megathil ninnu ivan ende priya putran ivane njan prasadikkunu ivane chevi kodupin ennu oru shabdam undayi praise god you want to hear god climb start climbing up you climb down you will listen to the devil you climb up you will listen to god you and i receive reassurance of faith on the mountain top clear view a birds i view is only provided when we climb up so i want to encourage each one of you listening to me tonight all the church members where pastor akilas is serving the lord climb up for the new experience and your fasting prayer i pray this will bring a new experience in your life a mountain top experience to see the clear vision a bird's eye view from the top looking down and that will definitely clear up all the clouds 
all those darkness you have because you are above the darkness, you are above the, the curse, you are above there with Christ and the prophets. May God bless you once again. I thank you so much, uh, uh, Pastor Akilas, for uh, calling me for sharing the word with you tonight. And we are really happy. We pray for you guys when we pray as a family. May God bless you and use you continually there. Thank you once again for listening to me. God bless you.